Let us pray. Loving and life-giving God, how good it is to be here in this, your house, in this sanctuary where we gather to be refreshed, restored, and renewed by your grace. Then to leave and return to the disquietude of our lives and world but reassured that you are our rock, strength, and ever-present help through the Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. As most of you no, recently I was on vacation, resting and recreating, recreating on Cape Cod near where I was born. It was five wonderful days of returning to my roots gathering with my cousins around meals at their home and at restaurants, enjoying immensely quality time with family. Those days sped by, and much too soon the day came to return home. Are vacations ever long enough? Be they five days or even five weeks. But here's the thing. I returned, returned refreshed and renewed. And as I, as I stand in this pulpit this morning, the first time since returning home, my vacay helped, helped prepare me to preach today's festival of the Transfiguration. Jesus leads three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, up a mountain to pray. While they were praying, Jesus' appearance is suddenly transformed. His clothes become dazzling white. Jesus' face glowing with blinding light. And if all, if all this wasn't enough for those three disciples, they hear a thunderous voice. It had to be the very voice of God. This is my son, my chosen, listen to him. The glory of this moment overwhelmed them. The glory so overwhelming that Peter doesn't want it to be over, doesn't want it to end. Master, it is, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now we can especially appreciate Peter's desire to capture the moment, the glory of this experience, as we understand that immediately before going up the mountain, Jesus has told the disciples that they will be going to Jerusalem where he will undergo terrible suffering and be, and be rejected and crucified 
and killed. Better, Peter reasons, better to bask in, in the glory of this mountaintop than to leave it for their master's suffering, rejection, and death. But Jesus leads them down the mountain, back to the world, the real world of need and suffering, where Jesus immediately encounters a dad who begs Jesus to heal his young son possessed by a demonic spirit. And Jesus does. And we, and we learn that the transfiguration wasn't meant to be an escape from the world and its challenges and burdens and tribulations and sufferings nor from Jesus suffering on the cross, but rather the mountaintop moment was help for coping with all that. Like vacations, mountaintop experiences, those, those times we bask in God's glory, those times when God is so very real to us, when we experience the divine so powerfully that we are uplifted and inspired and our faith is fortified, they don't last. They end. Yet, yet we are transformed by them and strengthened by them and renewed by them. That's why gathering each Lord's Day for worship in this haven, this sanctuary, is so central and so essential to our spiritual health and our spiritual development and our spiritual life. Just as I return to my physical roots on the Cape, we come to this place and return to our spiritual roots. We dip our fingers in the water of the font and we make the sign of the cross in remembrance of our baptism. Our souls receive refreshment and renewal in remembering anew that we are God's child. God's very own, God's chosen, that God, the Almighty God, calls us by name and declares of us, you are my son, you are my daughter, you are my beloved. And I am with you always. And just as I was refreshed and renewed by the fellowship with my family in Massachusetts, especially at those family meals we shared together, so we come here to this house of God. We come to fellowship with Jesus at our family meal. To have, to have Jesus himself feed us, nourish our souls with his love and his mercy, first in his word proclaimed and preached, his word proclaimed in lesson and sermon, and then to gather at our family meal, the meal Jesus provides and hosts the banquet of his very, his very body and blood. Here in this haven of God, we gather to find acceptance and support and hope and encouragement from our sisters and brothers 
in Christ. Our family of faith. Hopefully then, having been renewed and refreshed by worship and by fellowship, we go forth from this place back to what so many times is the, the disquietude, the disquietude of the world and our lives. Did you hear, did you hear this word disquietude in, in this sermon's opening prayer? It's used also in the collect for this transfiguration. O oh God, mercifully grant that we, being delivered from the disquietude of this world, may by faith behold the king in his, in his beauty. Disquietude is not a word we commonly hear or speak, so, so I did some research. The Oxford Dictionary defines it as, quote, a state of, of uneasiness or anxiety. Some synonyms are apprehension, nervousness, worry, and agitation. Probably I'm not alone when I look around at this world and as I consider also what people, including you, our members, and I personally, personally cope with in our lives. There's a whole lot of, of disquietude out there. The political tribalism dividing our country, tearing it asunder, the maiming and death by gun violence, the natural disasters precipitated by climate change, the tragic and prolonged war in Ukraine, the culture wars and the demonization of certain minorities, the neglect of the disadvantaged and those in poverty, and you can add to the list of the disquietude in our world. And then there are the personal struggles, conflict in the workplace, family squabbles resulting in estrangement and alienation, struggles with addictions, the betrayal of trust by a friend, battling chronic illness, the traumatic loss of independence with age, financial woes, and you can add to the list. Yes, there is certainly a lot of disquietude out there. Amid all that, I believe that just as Jesus took these three disciples up the mountain to experience a mountaintop moment and an unmistakable encounter with God, only then to return to the challenges and sufferings of the world. But they returned renewed, their faith fortified, so also we gather here each and every Lord's Day and how much we, we need to, to meet God, to encounter God's Son through the Holy, Script, the Holy Spirit, to have our souls fed, our souls refreshed, our souls renewed and restored, our faith fortified so that so that we can return to the world, our Monday through Saturday world, better able, far better, to cope with the challenges of the world and, and the storms we face personally. Every Sunday here, we connect with God so we 
so that we, by God, we can find the strength to cope with the challenges of our world and life. If I could paraphrase today's collect, it would go like this. Having come to this house of God to behold the king in his beauty, we leave this place, but not alone. God goes with us. We return we return to the disquietude of this life and world, knowing Emmanuel accompanies us, God with us, to deliver us from any and all disquietude. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.